Hey everyone, in today's video I'm sharing my summer travel adventures, road tripping in Europe. If you're interested to hear what we did, then keep on watching. Hey everyone, Irit here with a new video. I know I've been away for quite a while. I don't think I've taken such a long break from YouTube since I started this channel. I think even when I had my daughter in 2015, <laughs> I think I uh, took less time off. Um, I've missed making videos and I hope you've missed watching videos. Uh, before I get on with today's video, I just want to say hi, welcome, if you're new here. My name is Rit, I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist based in Austria, in Europe, and on my channel I mostly share my watercolor and mixed media adventures, but since I just kind of just came home from a pretty long vacation, um, I thought it would just be a nice opportunity to catch up. And so I just want to share kind of chatty style video uh, what I've been up to, where I've been traveling. I'm not a travel vlogger or anything like that. This is just going to be me sharing my personal uh, experiences. So if you're here for any like serious uh, travel recommendations, you're probably <laughs> better off <laughs> looking uh, at a dedicated channel to that. I'm just sharing my experiences uh, without any video footage. So just to make that clear. Um, it's just for those of you that have been around uh, for a short or long time and are just interested to know uh, what I've been doing. However, if you do have any questions or you'll be traveling to kind of one of the areas that I mentioned and you want to maybe hear some impressions or recommendations, then by all means you can leave me a comment or DM me or email me and if I can help, I will be happy to. So, um, yeah, and I also want to say before I start that um, this is only my impressions and I also want to say that if I say anything that might sound negative about a place or a country, it is by no means a judgment of the people it's many times, you know, things are the way that they are because of a country's history, uh, many times tragic history. And so I, I myself come from a very uh, controversial, turbulent place. And so I hope that, you know, if I say something about a place that maybe I didn't like or you know, we didn't enjoy for certain reasons, I don't mean that this country is not interesting, beautiful, and that the people are not lovely, because for the most part, I think anywhere in the world there are mostly really nice, welcoming people, and then anywhere in the world there are also those few that are less than great. <laughs> so um, please, please don't take this the wrong way if, you know, by any chance I mention place where you might live and maybe my uh, initial impressions weren't that positive. Um, mostly we had great experiences so I don't think I'll be mentioning a lot of like negative things but if I do mention it's it's more of just you know stating facts as I saw them and you know maybe I mean when I travel I want to go to beautiful places uh, for the most part, experience different cultures and yeah and many times just not be uh, around like tons and tons and tons of people so <laughs> uh, if you don't have a problem with that then you know maybe some of the things that I say won't matter to you but I also don't think that a lot of us want enjoy like you know standing in traffic for hours and hours so um, yeah I'll try not to offend anyone uh, and let's get to it. So I had quite a busy summer with a lot of traveling. I love traveling. It's one of those things that I feel like I need for my soul and uh, I try to travel as much as I can. 
my kids are getting a little bit older so it's getting easier one is 13 and the younger one is six so it is much easier now than it was a few years ago but they still have mostly the discrepancy of things that if one really wants the other one finds boring or can't do or yeah so that big age difference is sometimes a problem when we travel uh, or look for things that both kids will enjoy but it is the way that it is and yeah this summer i was very fortunate we started the summer with a short trip to my homeland uh, in israel and then i went there with my kids we spent some time with my family all my family lives there and then we had the luck of spending a few days in London, which is my favorite city and place in the entire world. I just love everything about it. I think I was British or English, probably a low life in a previous life, but I love London. I've been more than a dozen times. Uh, but because of COVID and having my youngest daughter, I actually haven't been there for, I think, nine years which is the longest stretch for me since the first time I visited London in, I wanna say 1994, uh, when I was 15. And ever since then I've been obsessed and just tried my best to go every year, a couple of years. And this time was the first time that I took my eldest with me. I just took her uh, because I felt, um, I don't know, that we could explore London in a way that you know she would really enjoy and wouldn't necessarily work for my youngest uh, I think maybe because I started visiting London when I was already in my you know teen years um, the activities for very young children never really were relevant to me and so I don't know I kind of experienced it just like as a young adult and kind of felt like that's the age where I wanted to introduce my kid to that city uh, probably mostly for selfish reasons because there are tons of things you can do obviously in London with young children but we could only go there in the summer and that means it's hot European air conditioning is I don't know non-existent most of the time and it's very very crowded so it was just circumstances that I had to go in the summer probably will never do that again if I can help it. Uh, I just think it's much better to visit London pretty much any other time of the year. But yeah, we were there for a few days. It was amazing. Um, the only sad thing for me was to see the beautiful London parks with yellow grass. It wasn't like this nine years ago. So it kind of, um, it's this image that is quite shocking to be uh, frank and now I mean Israel is a very very hot place you know we have a bit of green in spring and then everything becomes yellow and brown and so when I was living in Israel and I would visit London the parks seemed you know really amazing to me at the time they were still green the grass was green uh, but I really enjoyed the parks. Now, I, however, I live in Austria, which is an incredibly green country, and I live in the countryside, so I see this vibrant green all the time, and now just the London parks uh, kind of pale in comparison. So I think it's also, uh, you know, it depends where you come from and the sort of things that um, appeal to you more. For me, in London, I love the culture, the museums, the um, theater of course of course the theater and um yeah and everything about it but now probably the parks are kind of the least appealing things to me because i i basically live in a like a natural park sort of so that's just my experience um we went to a few plays and the one that was uh, completely new to me was hamilton I was there with other family members and they were really, really into it. So we all went and I have to say I was amazed. I did have some reservations about seeing Hamilton in London just because I feel like, you know, Hamilton is like so American. And so, um, you know, I would have preferred to see it in the US and see maybe something more British in London. But I'm really glad that my family took me there because it was incredible. The cast was amazing. And it's just like, I 
under I didn't want to uh, ruin the experience like in my mind it was kind of ruining the experience uh, watching the Disney plus you know footage of it or, or film or whatever they made I didn't want to do that I didn't want to come with any uh, preconceived notions or anything I wanted to come with like fresh eyes not compare it to anything and it was incredible it was just incredible I don't know where the uh, actors are from if they are American or British I have no idea but <sighs> wow that's all I can say wow besides that we saw Lion King which I have seen in the past I think actually in uh, Broadway but yeah it was amazing and <laughs> We had such a funny thing happen there. It was hilarious. Uh, on the row behind us, uh, there was a young, uh, cute uh, British kid who was speaking very loudly during the play. But you know, it's a young kid. I'm a mother. I understand. And um, yeah, so we had a lot of commentary about the play and all kinds of things. But then, <laughs> and we were like a little bit, a little bit like, okay, you know. It would be nice if he was a bit quieter but then they came uh, if you haven't seen the Lion King spoiler alert stop watching now um, yeah so anyway I'm guessing that everyone that came to that play knows uh, the Lion King like the Disney movie or one of the movies and so when the scene came that uh, what's his name Simba's father uh, Mufasa when he's uh, when he dies uh, you know it's like very very dramatic and then once that happened that little kid behind us was like yelling in a British accent which I'll poorly try to uh, reenact I did not see that coming and he was super loud like half the theater heard it and we all like started like just laughing because it was it was so hilarious. I mean, who doesn't know that Mufasa dies in The Lion King, right? <laughs> and uh, during the intermission, then I, I talked to his mom a bit, and she was like, I don't know, he saw the movie. Like, I don't know what that was. <laughs> but <laughs> it was just like, you know, like a perfectly timed, uh, you know, comedian. It was just hilarious. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and we did a bunch of other stuff in London. It was very very um, intense because we just had a few days we went also to the Harry Potter studios which I've never seen and it was incredible and yeah and then I came home and we were home for like a couple of weeks and then we went on a road trip so the whole uh, idea of this road trip was that I'm in Austria in kind of the southeast part of Austria and um, my best friend, uh, we've been friends since we were 10, uh, she traveled with her family um, in North Greece, the northern part of Greece, for uh, several weeks and then they ended their uh, trip in uh, one of the Greek islands called Kofu and the idea was that we meet there, we've, we've had like, um, you know, joint vacations in the past but actually not since our youngest kids were born so not for several years uh, we always meet and uh, we try also to travel together abroad especially me and her but it's been a while since we've done like a, a entire family uh, families uh, get together and it's something that is really important to me not just because she's my best friend although that's kind of the most of it the the biggest part of it but um, because she lives in Israel and so I don't see her very often and our kids don't have that um, you know continuance connection and also the fact that you know she is from Israel and I would like my kids to have kind of strong ties to that place so it was really important to me and we managed to uh, rent a beautiful villa for a week in Kofu so that was kind of the and that was the middle of um, the vacation block that we had we had three weeks and that was in the middle and we couldn't really change that for just like different reasons and so I had to figure out how to get there and back uh, during that time and what else to do so the first thing I thought was of course to fly there 
and last summer we did some island hopping um, on the other side of Greece. Uh, we went to Mykonos and Paros and it was very easy to take like a ferry between the islands and so I assumed it was the same thing uh, on the west side with Corfu and uh, Paxos and Zakynthos and a few uh, Lefkes I think. No, Lefkes is... Anyway, I thought <laughs> that would be also the case, but apparently it's not really the case. So I started with like booking flights and trying to figure out if we could island hop because I didn't want to spend three weeks just on Corfu. But the low cost flights, they don't fly every day. And also because it was like high, high seasons, the middle of August, the prices were still pretty high. So between losing a few days from every direction of our three week vacation and the cost and the fact that we assumed we would probably want to hire a car uh, in Kofu because my friend uh, family, my friend's family, they were renting a car for the entire duration of their trip. And, and so I wanted us to be more, you know, mobile. Um, so all those cuts together uh, were kind of too much in addition to that really nice villa that uh, we wanted to splurge on. And then I thought, you know, I looked at the map and I was like, okay, actually Kofu is the easiest to reach island uh, with a car from where we live in Austria. And that's the amazing thing about Europe that you can just, you know, drive through countries. And although it's nicer in theory than in reality, but um, yeah, it's not that long. You know, if you look at the map, um, you can see that. And then I was like, okay, let's do a road trip. Uh, I love road trips. I love adventures. I love traveling. Uh, so I was like, yay, great, and I started planning this, and as usual, I bit off more than I could chew, and um, yeah, it was a bit more uh, too ambitious with our schedule, but um, somehow it all worked out, <laughs> somehow. We had a few rough days, so I decided to get from where I live which is in Styria, this is uh, the region in Austria where we live, which is uh, actually very, very close to the border with Slovenia, which is to the south. Um, the shortest way to get to Kofu, um, and shortest, I just mean, you know, fastest, is through the, you know, highways that actually go south all the way down to Greece, actually the more eastern part of Greece, Saloniki or Thessaloniki as they say uh, in Greece, I think. And we, we just traveled in so many places, I probably will butcher all kinds of names, so I do apologize. Um, I usually try to do my research and learn about places that I visit, but we just drove through so many places that I just didn't have time to you know, sink my teeth into uh, the history of each region. So again, my apologies. Um, yeah, so that's the fastest way. You go south east to Saloniki and then you go kind of west through the north of Greece and then you take a ferry to Kofu. So that's the shortest uh, way um, with more kilometers, but time-wise shortest because it's all you can uh, drive on highways, which you have to pay a toll for, but we were okay with that. And I decided, you know, we don't want to do that because that's boring, although it's not boring, but I thought since my husband especially and my kids also, you know, they want the sea. It's summer, they want the sea, Austria is landlocked, there's no sea. And so I thought, okay, we should go through the coast of Croatia um, and go through there. So that means going to... Um, going south from where we live, crossing the border to Slovenia, then crossing to Croatia, then driving to the coastline, and then going south until you reach Albania, and from Albania take a ferry to Greece. And that's how I planned it, and I planned the way down there to last about five days. And originally I planned it with like um, three hours driving in mind, which is quite a lot, uh, especially with kids. And this was, you know, just on Google without like traffic or anything, big mistake. 
and um, my idea was that you know these days are going to be kind of intense and we're going to drive a lot but we're also going to see a lot and see a lot of places that might be relevant for future vacations since it's all especially Croatia is just a few hours drive from where we live and uh, and then you know we're going to be for like nine days in Kofu without driving almost at all uh, so I thought it would be kind of an okay balance and then of course there's a way back which I didn't even think about I said let's see how it goes on the way down and the way back I knew would already be kind of at the end of the season not like super high season so it shouldn't be a problem to find accommodation um, you know when I'm in Kofu and kind of plan that part uh, when I'm already there in Greece so that was the idea <laughs> and um, yeah it worked fine we had a lot of adventures we saw really pretty places but also there were some rough patches and I guess the biggest issue that we came across was the traffic. Uh, I haven't really experienced that kind of migration that the Europeans make towards the Mediterranean and the coast. Um, we've been to Croatia, I think, one time in the summer and like, you know, high season. And yeah, it was just like the one time. But other than that, I think we've mostly went in autumn and and we actually haven't been, we went to Slovenia in autumn, so we haven't really driven in that direction during the summer. We've done road trips on other, in other directions. And so we stood in traffic for hours. Basically all of Europe, you know, you stand there on the highway and you see cars from Germany, from Poland, from Italy, from France from Slovenia, of course Croatia, everyone is going to the coastline. Yeah, so um, <laughs> also it's the border crossings vary greatly and I'm not really sure why some are so jammed and some we've driven over some that are just, there's nobody there. You can just cross the border and there's nobody there. So, uh, you know, in general, in the European Union, you don't really get a stamp on your uh, passport when you pass. If you have a European passport, you can uh, cross freely between the countries, the European Union and countries that are in the Schengen uh, Agreement. Um, so I understand if there are lines when you get into one of these countries, like the first stop, uh, the same way it would be at an airport. But then, for example, I wasn't sure why the border from Croatia to Slovenia was so jammed because both of them are in the union as far as I know so I don't really understand it but you know some borders like the border between Austria and Slovenia there's like nobody there the border from Austria to Italy there's nobody there and then in other places you stand for an hour two hours depends on the day your luck and usually there's just very very few people working um, in those places which I don't understand but yeah so yeah so the first day I wanted to we started uh, kind of in the early afternoon um, because my husband has still had to work on that day he came home and then we left and I wanted to get a couple of border crossings uh, you know under our belt so we drove through Slovenia the border to Slovenia is like 40 minutes from where we live and then you drive for like an hour in Slovenia and you cross to Croatia and we spent our first night in Zagreb uh, the capital of Croatia and we had this really really cute apartment in the center of the town I always when I come to new places you never know what to expect this apartment it was extremely comfortable and it was great and I would definitely go back there again but it was kind of in this weird like ground floor of you know just like these buildings like apartment buildings it looked like it would be uh, like a lobby or you know the entrance floor to a building but it was an apartment I don't know it was very strange but I had free parking and it was a short walking distance to the town center like the old center so we walked there we walked around a bit um, had a nice dinner and uh, it really has a nice vibe we only spent uh, that evening there and then the next morning we went to a museum um, but definitely a town I would gladly go back to for like a weekend um, 
it had that kind of classic European vibe, but also a little bit more kind of Mediterranean, not um, had some grandness to it. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit more uh, rough around the edges, let's say, and still really, really cool place. So um, I hope to go back there again. And in the morning we went to the Nikola Tesla Science Museum because my youngest uh, loves museums and wants us to take her to museums all the time. So we went, this is like a small science museum uh, with, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like old style museum. There's not a lot of like interactive things, but there are all kinds of like old uh, airplanes and cars and, you know, submarines. And, and then on the top floor, there's just like old, dentist equipment and cameras and radios and TVs and all those things. So really, really cute. We spent a couple of hours there and then we headed down to the coast and then we spent most of, most of the day in traffic. And by the time we got to our very, very cute uh, apartment, um, it was late. We were tired. The weather wasn't that great. That's another thing. If you're uh, spending your summer in Europe, don't count on nice weather because uh, yeah, it's not always nice, <laughs> so, uh, but we did go to a really nice uh, restaurant for dinner, and then, yeah, then that was kind of an annoying day because we were standing a lot of traffic. Then the next day, we continued uh, driving south, and those days were just a little bit hectic. We didn't really have time to stop and explore. Everything was extremely busy, extremely crowded. I was, again, mentally prepared for that because I knew that on this trip, you know, the way down is going to be kind of more in the car passing through, and then we were going to have that bulk of time in Kofu. Um, so I just made some mental notes of places that I want to come back to, and one of them is most definitely Dubrovnik. This is a very well-known town in Croatia. I think it's called like the you know jewel or pearl of the Adriatic Sea, and we just passed uh, kind of next to it, and we could see it from um, beautiful uh, coast roads. It looked incredible. There's like this old city. It's right on the coast. It's just like, you know, everything you want. They filmed uh, Game of Thrones there. Uh, so definitely a place I want to come back to, but probably just take a flight <laughs> from Austria to Dubrovnik and spend like a weekend uh, in the town exploring. Uh, but I definitely, definitely want to go back there. And that whole area of Croatia, it's very well known. It's very uh, touristic, but um, it's still, I think, beautiful and not like overdeveloped to that level of just like, ugh, just like, you know, get me out of here. There's too many people. Um, so yeah, we were very impressed with that. We stayed at a really great apartment with like lots of space. I also splurged a little bit, you know, first of all, it was high season. These places are super, um, touristic and so the prices are high and then my kids don't like to share a bed because then one of them doesn't sleep it's usually the older one because my youngest just you know sleeps like across the bed legs on your face and i know that because sometimes when we only had rooms with like two double beds I would get the pleasure of sleeping with her, uh, which is a pleasure, but I admit that you might not necessarily get your best night's sleep. So I tried to find places where either they had two single beds um, and hopefully a separate room. Um, that wasn't always possible price-wise and also just what was available. But yeah, so a, a few times I splurged with like, you know, bigger apartments, Many times these apartments that are advertised for four people, uh, you would have like one bedroom with a double bed and then in the living room there's a uh, sofa bed that opens and that doesn't work for my kids. And you know, if none of us gets a good night's sleep, then we're all miserable the next day. So found us a really nice apartment in Croatia. It was walking distance to what in Croatia is considered a beach and <laughs> I'm not judging. Uh, it's just that <laughs> Um, in Israel, you know, we're also on the coast of the Mediterranean and there are just like kilometers and kilometers of sandy beaches. Uh, so you never have to 
um, you know, sit on a crowded beach. You could if you want, if you found a nice beach, you could, but uh, there's just a lot of space. And in Croatia, that is not the case. And a lot of the beaches are uh, rocky or you would just have like a stone platform and then um, a pebbled little beach. Uh, but yeah, we spent kind of that late afternoon uh, in the water. It was lovely. And yeah, started to feel a bit more like vacation after all that traffic. So that was our first dip in the sea. And then the next day we drove down to Montenegro and um, actually from pretty much that point on, this was all kind of new territory to us. As I said, we've been to Croatia, but we only got as south as Zadar, uh, which is a, another nice uh, beach city or port town or whatever. Very, very nice. That's as far as I think either one of us have been. And yeah, and then we went to Montenegro. We heard great things about Montenegro and we only spent one night there and just kind of drove through, but it did look very, very beautiful. And there are also beautiful, famous areas that, um, like the Bay Area there that we just didn't get a chance to see. Um, but yeah, we stayed at this complex. The area itself was very, very busy and a bit overdeveloped. Um, you know, everybody goes to the coast. But uh, we stayed at basically this like family compound and the family has their home there. The family that owns it has their home there. And then a few um, houses with uh, like vacation apartments. And so we had one of the apartment. The apartment itself was kind of standard, um, you know, clean and everything, but uh, actually probably not as nice as the other ones that uh, we stayed in Croatia. Uh, but this place had kind of the private beach and, you know, just for the guests and the family. And they had these like beach beds that you normally see in these like fancy beach clubs. And you know, it was ours to use and we just, um, we also went into the water and they were beautiful and refreshing, but just like that luxury of sitting on this really nice um, kind of beach bed, reading my book, it was just so relaxing. It was fantastic. Uh, so just got a little taste of Montenegro. Um, yeah, I'll probably, maybe I'll go back uh, another time. Uh, Croatia is just a little bit closer, but uh, it definitely made a great impression on me and it looks beautiful. And um, I didn't, we didn't even go to like towns and, you know, nature and natural parks and all that. We just uh, saw a little bit of the coastline and that was glorious. And then the next day uh, was another rough day where we crossed to Albania. And if you read a little bit about Albania, it has a very complicated, kind of sad history to it. And basically it's been open to the world for just uh, about 20 years. And so I didn't know what to expect. I tried to watch like a few videos and read a little bit, you know, which beaches to go to. Originally I planned two nights in particular locations, but then after uh, seeing the condition of the traffic, I decided to kind of change the location of the second night. So um, we would have to drive less um, and stay a bit away from the coast, which was incredibly busy. So the day when we crossed to Albania, um, first of all, it's a little bit jarring when you cross. It is a poorer country and you feel it, you cross the border and um, you just, you know, you see that there's like houses in very poor condition right when you cross the border and um, there are like beggars and like children begging and, you know, young women with like babies or grown up children with babies in their arms. And it's just, you know, it's not like if you don't see it, it doesn't, it's not like it doesn't exist. But uh, it was, it's, it's just, you know, it's heartbreaking. And um, I don't know what else to say about that. But I think for my kids, it was, you know, I was trying to tell them, like, I hope you know how fortunate you are. I'm also grateful to be living, as I said, uh, Austria is not my homeland. And I'm very grateful to be able to live here. It's such a 
uh, peaceful and rich and beautiful and clean country and uh, sadly that's not the case for most other places in the world and as I said I come from a very turbulent place uh, with its share of problems and um, yeah I'm, I'm just obviously sorry to to see people in in that need but yeah we were basically standing in traffic the, that whole day until we got to the coast which was very very busy very very crowded and it, it was just like a little bit shock to the systems also because we're not used to it we live in the countryside there's like there's very few people around you know a few houses around us and uh, also the Austrians uh, tend to keep like more of a kind of personal distance uh, a lot more than like in Israel for example and and so it was just a different environment to what my kids are used to and my husband also and I've been here for 10 years so I also kind of got used to it it's very easy to get used to certain things um, so it was just like very 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 crowded like everywhere you go like tons and tons and tons of people everywhere and um, yeah I'm just not it's also it's not just about the people it's just like you know I think most of us correct me if i'm wrong enjoy vacationing not when you're like always walking or sitting with like people 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 everywhere so yeah um the place had the first night we stayed in a place called dues i'm probably butchering the name but that was like very 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 crowded it was also very cheap and so I understood why I heard uh, as we were sitting on the beach I heard Romania next to me my parents are from Romania so I understand kind of the simple language I can't speak Romanian but uh, I can definitely recognize it and understand it so I think probably a lot of people drive from Romania you can definitely um, you know enjoy the beach the, the the sea was beautiful and the beach was actually very well taken care of we saw early in the morning they were already like cleaning it um, and obviously you can buy anything you want there, like food and, and, and everything. Um, so I think it's a very like nice and easy and cheap vacation. And I mean in the best way, uh, like affordable uh, place. But yeah, very, very crowded. And so the next day I uh, reassessed our um, journey and decided to go directly to the port town where we'll be taking our ferry from instead of staying another night just further away and then having to drive on the morning of our um, boat ferry trip. Uh, that was a really good decision and that uh, that town is called Sarande or Saranda. Again, really sorry if I'm butchering the name. And that place already had more of, it was more expensive and you can see things were like a little bit like you know just more expensive everything like more expensive hotels looked a little bit more uh shiny and sparkly and still very very crowded um yeah just a different vibe kind of reminded me a little bit more of croatia and there are again all kinds of like interesting things to see and do we just didn't have the time um that day we drove a little bit more inland through albania and we really enjoyed the um, the time the highways were fantastic there was no traffic uh, it was completely different than that day before um, I think before just because we were going to the coastline and that's where everyone goes uh, I asked at the hotel where we stayed I didn't want to risk apartments because you never know with like check-in and you know the standards so I was like okay let's just book a hotel where I can you know ask people to fix if fix things if something's not working um, and I asked her like is, the, is, is there something special today that the traffic is so horrible because we've just been standing since we crossed the border and she said no it's summer so yeah but then we drove inland and it was just beautiful there were like mountains and the, it, there was really not a lot going on like not a there weren't like a lot of cities or anything it seemed very very rural very um, kind of yeah just just an area that probably I'm guessing not a lot of tourists have have found 
and there was like this beautiful river um, going through the mountains the water had that like icy blue color it was really really lovely we really enjoyed it and i think if you are interested in traveling to more kind of rugged um, you know off the beaten track places I would say like the inland areas of Albania would definitely be an interesting place to see and yeah just stay away from the coastline during summer or make an effort to find uh, places that are not like overdeveloped I'm sure that they have those I just didn't really have the time to dig too deep into that because it was just like a couple of days in our journey and then came the day of crossing and you know to be frank we were a little bit relieved just because it was so so hectic and so messy and so hard like to drive there the drivers are crazy and i come from a place where the drivers are very very crazy but um yeah some people in albania really put to shame those crazy israeli drivers i have to say they overtake like they can see a truck coming they overtake it's it's super scary to drive there in my opinion um yeah so the crossing that was interesting that was like the the cherry on top of the albanian adventure um the original vessel that we were supposed to go on uh was not available and so i can't tell you what that original vessel was but the one that we crossed uh to kofu on was a tiny boat and they shoved a gazillion people on there motorcycles and then four cars and our car was the last one to go in it was like five centimeters from the side of the boat five centimeters from the car next to it and about five centimeters from the back of the boat i already saw our car you know it's our car we drove with our car it's not a rented car <laughs> although i think probably our insurance is better than a rental company's insurance but i already saw it just like ploops like sinking into the sea and you know I don't know even where I would put myself now on that scale of like a super stressed traveler and a super shanty calm one. Um, I think I'm somewhere in the middle. I think I don't get to be like I'm not super stressed most of the time, but I was stressed. My husband was super cool about it and he had to like drive the car onto the ship and everything. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take his lead. If he's not stressed, I'm not gonna stress <laughs> and somehow we crossed <laughs> and then we were in Kofu and I think part of it is I mean that boat trip was horrible it was super expensive it costs three times more than it cost us then to cross to mainland Greece and when we crossed to Greece you know on our way back it was like this really really nice boat that was huge 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 and you know they put trucks on it and cars and there was just tons of spaces and it was very very luxurious and it cost 60 euros uh you know for all four of us and the car to cross and from albania to greece it was 180 euros so um and that trip cost me probably a few years of my life <laughs> so that was our adventure in albania and then kofu was very very easy um very very touristic i have to say you know we had a great time there um there are beautiful beaches and it just has this kind of greek italian vibe to it but i have to say like my heart is with palos uh, on the other side the cycladian islands i think they're called you know uh, palos santorini mykonos i haven't been to santorini but um this just had a different vibe to it it was also smaller we were there a little bit after the high season so i think that also uh, has an effect but yeah what was just unfortunate about going to a greek island in the high season is just that it was very very crowded um also there's a lot of trash everywhere which is just unfortunate i mean people are pigs and they should you know keep their trash contained to trash cans but i wish that the government or you know local authorities would make a bigger effort to clean it because you know you go to a beach and then there's like a corner next to it where everyone does their business and throws their trash and it's just like you know it takes away from the experience so uh, that was unfortunate but 
yeah obviously we had the best time you know with my friend and her family and our kids got along so well and we had this beautiful villa um, with a pool and it was just lovely uh, Kung Fu Town um, is just you know charming and nice it's just a lot of people everywhere and you know we tried to go to some of the um, like famous beaches with like rock formations and you know you see the pictures it looks amazing and then you go to the place and it's just like you can't even see the beach because it's like covered with people um so yeah but uh, we went also highly recommend if you're in Kofu and you have the time and the will and the budget to go to a water park there's a fantastic water park there don't go on the weekend um, but we were during the week, you know, in August, high season, and it didn't feel uh, too crowded. And it was just a fantastic water park. I think it's called like Aqua Park Kofu or something like this. The kids had the best time. This was actually the first day that uh, our families like met. And it was great because I could sit and chat with my bestie and the kids were just like... I, I think we were sitting next to the area that uh, was... Uh, suitable for Lily's age, um, my six-year-old, I think it's till age 10, and um, it's great because the waters are shallow there and the slides are not fast, so she didn't even need her um, Schwimmflügel, you know, like her swimming wings <laughs> of all languages <laughs> circling in my head, but she can't uh, swim very well, so um, yeah, but she was just, I just saw her like just, you know, going down the slide, up the stairs, down the slide, up the stairs, the whole day like that. Uh, she stepped on a wasp and I don't know, she got hit in the face and she was bleeding and still she was like, just like up and down and up and down. She was super happy. And of course, my 13 year old went to the more extreme um, slides and I also did a few and it was just like a really, really great day, really fun for the kids. Mostly we try to stay away from like these kind of, you know, attractions that are just, you know, expensive and crowded, but this was a great uh, day, especially I felt I needed to compensate them after all the time that they were sitting in traffic jams. <laughs> so uh, it was great. And we had a really cute apartment, a few minutes driving from the park. Uh, just, we got to Kofu a couple of days before uh, we moved into the villa. And so I found this really, really cute apartment, very spacious with lovely, lovely people, um, you know, as the hosts, and it was great. Um, driving there is also interesting, you know, islands, small roads, very, very busy, very, very crowded. Uh, there are some nice beaches, again, everything with a lot of people. On our last day there, we rented a little boat and like a skipper because we didn't want to uh, drive the boat ourselves. And he just took us to, you know, some areas that you can only reach with a boat. And so we swam there and like snorkeled and it's just like these insanely clear turquoise jade deep blue waters. It was just amazing. It was, you know, a bit of a splurge, but so worth it. The kids had the best time. Uh, they were like jumping off the boat and, you know, we were like swam to like a little, um, little, little beach that you can't even, there was like nobody there. Um, just beautiful. It was just beautiful. So that was that part of the trip. It was very easy going and um, yeah, besides the fact that it was very crowded, but we had our private um, space to escape to and, you know, we could... Uh, sit and chat in the evenings, go to the pool, um, drink wine together. I don't drink wine just because I don't like it, but <laughs> the other grown-ups could drink wine and talk and uh, it was just lovely. It was lovely. It went too fast and I hope we can do that again someday soon. And then it was time for our way back and this time I decided that we're nef definitely not going back through Albania also because the way was actually longer. I mean, I chose it because I thought it would be um, more fun and pretty to be next to the coast and go to the sea, uh, which we did, but it was also longer and a lot more um, crowded because everyone goes to the sea in August in Europe. 
So I decided to go back a different way and I was really glad that I didn't book anything. I mean, I did book a couple of things and I did lose a little bit of money, but I didn't book like the ferry ride, for example. So we were kind of free agents, which is another very cool thing when you're, you know, on a road trip with your car um, and kind of free to go. I checked ahead to see, I don't have an Austrian passport. With an Austrian passport, you can pretty much go anywhere. Um, you don't need a visa. Um, but with an Israeli passport that is not the case and so I made sure before we left that I can um, that I'm allowed to enter all those countries I knew Croatia because we've been there before but Montenegro it's not in the Union Albania uh, again not in the Union so I made sure I could go there and then when we considered going back a different way I also checked that I can go into North uh, Macedonia uh, and Serbia um, yeah, so <laughs> lots of countries. <laughs> so I made sure and uh, according to the internet, <laughs> I could. And yeah, and so my friend, as I said, they've been traveling through uh, North Greece and they had a few recommendations. And so we decided to spend a few more days in Greece on the mainland and uh, go to some of like the places that they really, really enjoyed and that were kind of on our way because I didn't want to add more hours. And so we took a really, really nice boat to Igumenitsa, I want to say. I have, like, I, I can't pronounce some of these names no matter how hard I try. So if you're from Greece or if this annoys you, I do apologize and I'm really, really sorry. I try. So we crossed to the mainland. It was a beautiful one and a half hour boat ride that was very enjoyable, very luxurious, especially compared with the one uh, from Albania. And then we drove an hour to Ioannina, which is a lovely, um, kind of lively, a lovely, lively, um, bustling, bustling town uh, right on a lake. And um, yeah, so I decided to spend two nights there. And then the first day we came there and we kind of explored the city. Really, really fun. Great street food. Um, great food in general very inexpensive and the town itself is very charming there's like an old um, fortress I want to say and just like lovely streets to wander around through in you know what I mean and then the next day we went rafting on one of the rivers there are lots of rivers in Greece and we chose one of them and it was lovely the water was freezing but uh, we didn't really get wet except um, on a certain part of the like rafting you stop your raft and they took us to this cute little waterfall where my husband and my daughter kind of jumped into the water <laughs> there was no way I was going to do that it's way too cold I'm Israeli we go in the water when it's like 30 degrees and above outside and the water is like 30 degrees so we call it pishwasser so like pee water <laughs> that's what we like um, but yeah my family is Austrian so they went into those cold cold waters and yeah it was just lovely um, the water is very very calm in August some would say too calm you know it's kind of low but um, it was very fitting with you know a young child and uh, we really really enjoyed it it was lovely and there's like this beautiful stone bridge kind of at the end of uh, the section where you raft um, yeah and those were just like a few hours that we all really really enjoyed and then in the evening again we went out to Ioannina uh, ate some more street food and then the next day we drove to a place that is probably one of the most unique places I've ever seen it's called Meteora and it's basically a place with these really really incredible and kind of weird um stone formations cliffs um you know google it and you'll see and what is also special about that is that the monks there like a few hundred years ago built uh, a few monasteries on those cliffs so you have these crazy weird rock formations cliffs that do look like they just you know were dropped there from space and then you have these beautiful monasteries like on top of them 
Um, so we just drove around and kind of saw the sunset and ate at a tourist trap and <laughs> and we had a great apartment there we had like I was just looking I didn't mean to like look for a three-bedroom apartment but that's what I found and it was very very like it was one of the cheapest places we've stayed in and my daughters were so happy to finally not sleep in the same room as each other or with us uh, because the other place in Yanina it was uh, we were all sleeping in one room and um, yeah so we had a lot of space that was nice but the place itself is just really really special so the first evening we just um, drove around saw the sunset took some great pictures and then the next day we went and visited one of the monasteries and it was a beautiful uh, the monastery itself you they have like different variations of um, you know how hard it is to access um, the monasteries six are still active there used to be a lot more and for some of them you really have to like climb a lot uh, so we chose one that you know you only had to go up like 100 stairs um, but the monastery itself is really really beautiful and um, yeah that was that was a really really special place and then we drove to Saloniki or Thessaloniki and that was kind of in our heads kind of like the last the end of the trip I mean we still had a long way to go home but um, yeah we didn't really know how that's going to look how long it's going to take how fast we want to do that and so that was kind of the end of our um, adventure and yeah I found us a really cute uh, hotel like a boutique hotel with breakfast in the center of Saloniki and we explored the city in the afternoon and evening really really vibrant city it reminded me a lot like the vibe reminded me a lot of Tel Aviv but it's much grander you have suddenly you know these like large um, avenues and like uh, more fancy buildings but it's still you can see it's not like a very rich town also they had some great yarn shops there <laughs> so sorry that you know I have enough yarn but I was really like I need to go back there and just like shop and also I found the most perfect um, nail polish there so I think I have to go back for that as well but that's for a different uh, video um, yes yeah, so a really really cool town we went to a cute restaurant um, and had some great Greek food. They had some great um, vegan options, like a vegan moussaka, and I was very excited about that. And um, yeah, it was very um, cool place to explore. And then the next day we decided before we head north back to Austria, we went a little bit uh, again in town and went to the Jewish Museum um, just because you know it's always interesting for me and it was uh, very interesting to read about the history obviously tragic I mean the whole of Europe is like a big cemetery uh, for Jews but for other people as well with all the wars here I mean just like think about Yugoslavia that wasn't so long ago and I'm not even talking about Ukraine and Russia but anyway um, it was very interesting to see, of course, very sad, but I always try to stay hopeful because I'm still here, my kids are still here, and, you know, probably most Jewish families have some story that the gist of it, it's like, it's a miracle we're here. So, um, yeah, but I definitely feel like I'm interested in, in this, obviously, in the history of my people, but I also owe it to my kids to... Um, expose them to that uh, when you live in Israel you're obviously much more exposed to everything <laughs> connecting to uh, Israel Jewish history all that stuff uh, but yeah we live in Austria so they don't get so much uh, of that here and yeah and Lily loves museums so <laughs> it was a win-win <laughs> And that was kind of the end. And then we spent two days mostly driving. We crossed to North Macedonia. I didn't know anything about the country. I still don't know much, but the um, landscape seemed very, very lovely. There were like mountains everywhere. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, it would be a great place to explore nature if that's your jam. 
We stopped for a few hours in Skopje again. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering the name. That's the capital of North Macedonia. And um, they have some very impressive stuff there, um, you know, statues and buildings and historical areas like uh, the old bazaar. But again, sadly, like so many parts are just like falling apart. And I, I wish that it would be possible or it was made possible to like make that a priority because I think it was just attract a lot more tourists and that's a win-win I think for everyone so uh, it was an interesting place we got, <laughs> I don't know if I should say that in a video but we got shaken down at the border <laughs> so maybe I'll talk about that in a video it wasn't anything serious but basically the guy at the border crossing um, asked for passports and our car license which is very standard and then he asked for our car insurance form and we didn't have it and obviously we have like full insurance uh, I don't even think you're allowed not to have insurance in Austria but we didn't have a paper for it and so he told us to like stop somewhere on the side like get a get away from the lane of cars and then he told my husband you know if you go on you can go to like the next counter and you can pay like 50 euros and then you can pass through or something or you can put 20 euros now in your passport and give it to me and I will let you through <laughs> and since we were stuck in that border crossing for an hour and we just wanted to get out of there and you never know I'm always a little bit worried with my Israeli passports that um, someone will decide to make trouble. It hasn't happened yet, so it might be just me being paranoid, but yeah, we gave him the 20 euros and we got the hell out of there. Um, I don't even know if he made that up, if that's something that is needed. You know, of course we could have said, no, thank you, we'll wait. We could have talked to our uh, insurance agent and had it like faxed or emailed or something, but I don't know. It's like these situations, you know, sometimes you just want to get out of there and for 20 euros we're like, okay, let's just let's just give him the money. Uh but it is infuriating, I would say, and yeah, it shouldn't shouldn't be the case, but it is what it is. So, yeah, we drove through North Macedonia and then we crossed to Serbia. Uh at the border crossing, again the the um, police so at the border crossing, the police guy, like, you know, looked at all the Austrian passports, no problem, then looked at my Israeli passport and and had to walk away <laughs> for a bit. I always get a little bit worried, but I did check ahead and I was also checking as we were there. I was just like double checking, like, can Israelis go into Serbia? And yeah, it, there was no problem. He came back and everything's fine. And I have another stamp in my passport, but it's always like for me, it's always a little bit... Um, yeah, there's a little bit of stress uh, in those uh, crossings, but yeah. Uh, and sadly, we just drove through Serbia. We um, kind of drove during the afternoon, like after North Macedonia, after uh, spending a few hour, a couple of hours in Skopje. We did, it was already kind of afternoon and then we decided, okay, we'll just take a hotel in Belgrade, uh, which is the capital of Serbia, and stay there. Um, and then in the morning, we were debating if to go into center, the center of the town. It's supposed to be really beautiful. There's like the Danube and another river, Save, Sava, I want to say, sorry. Um, two rivers kind of meeting together. It's supposed to be really lovely, but it was just pouring rain. So we were like, okay, um, let's just go home. And uh, we stood some time in border crossings, but then we crossed to Croatia. That was like a long one. That was like an hour uh, to cross from Serbia to Croatia and then from Croatia to Slovenia, and then Slovenia, Austria was really easy. And yeah, we were home that evening. So we drove from Belgrade to our home in Austria, um, you know, in like a day. It wasn't even a full day. Okay, maybe it was a full day, but <laughs> um, yeah, that's really amazing to me. 
uh, in Israel you can't really drive anywhere. I mean, you can, we have peace agreements with a couple of the countries around us, but um, the way that it is in Europe is quite extraordinary for someone like me. Um, and yeah, so lots of experiences and it was a big adventure. I don't think we'll be doing anything this, um, you know, grandiose or like so ambitious um, in the next years. This was costly and this was also, I think, the first time my husband got three weeks in one block in the summer because, you know, everyone wants to take a vacation in the summer, everyone with kids. <laughs> so uh, we've never had that long. That's why I thought it would be great to use it for a road trip because, you know, there's just some places that you need the time to get to them uh, in Europe. And yeah, that probably won't happen again, but I definitely, my uh, kind of, passion and thirst to visit more Greek islands is, you know, as strong as it was after the previous summer, which I just fell in love with uh, the Greek islands. There are so many and they have such different vibes and different nature and culture. Um, so I definitely see myself going back there. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this story time. Again, um, these are just my experiences, my impressions, and the people that we met, probably with the exception of that one <laughs> guy at the border, um, everyone was welcoming and nice and helpful. Um, so th that's usually has been my experience traveling in most parts of the world. Uh, sometimes you meet someone a bit more annoying, but it can happen anywhere. And um, yeah, it is easier to travel in certain countries, but many times if you want to see something different or if you want to see something that is kind of the road less traveled, uh, there are challenges. Uh, I think most of Europe is very, very easy to travel in, but um, yeah, I always, I, I just, I have constant wanderlust and I'm always waiting for the next adventure. Um, I have a long bucket list of places I want to visit or return to. Uh, I definitely want to go back to London soon because those few days were just not enough and it was just too hot and I want to go back there again when it's cooler. Um, but yeah, I hope you're having a good summer. I hope you have or already had a good start of the new school year. Um, my kid is starting her first class in school next week, so it's a big thing for us and for her. No more kindergarten, and yeah, I'll soon have two kids in school. Um, as long as, th as things go in their like normal rhythm, I'm happy and grateful. Yes, time flies and it goes by faster and faster, but uh, as long as everyone is healthy and it's the way it should be, I'm just grateful that, you know, that we're all healthy and <laughs> things are okay. Uh, but yeah, so let me know what you've been up to this summer. Let me know uh, about your road trip adventures. Uh, I would love to know uh, if you don't want to read it, if you don't want to like write about it in the comments, you can always email me and I wish you a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more watercolor and mixed media videos, make sure you subscribe. That is coming soon. I think I might do a couple of not necessarily arty related videos um, just because I haven't been really back into the arty groove. I'm still uh, with kids at home. It's still summer vacation here, but uh, we'll see. So hopefully I'll get back to my regular uh, weekly videos very very soon and it will definitely be around uh, watercolor or other arty stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye bye.